Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Picture Book Parade. I am Ronnie Curry, Booklists Books for Youth Associate Editor. And before we begin, I will go over some technical details. If you're in the audience, you are in listen only mode, but we do welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question, if you need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we will pass along all other questions to today's panelists. That way they can follow up with you after the webinar. Also, Booklist will now be offering closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned that I just mentioned. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Last but not least, links to today's slides and a title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom and click on the link located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Donna Spurlock, Marketing Director at Charles Bridge Publishing, Lauren Wengervitz, Marketing Associate, School and Library, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers, Amanda Acevedo, Marketing Manager, School and Library, also at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers. Ashley Marie Morellis, Director of Sales and Marketing at Familius. Heather Lennon, Sales Director at North South Books. And finally, Megan Jones, Marketing Director at Greystone Kids. And first up, we are gonna hear from Donna Spurlock. Donna is the Marketing Director at Charles Bridge Publishing. Prior to the publishing life, Donna was a bookseller and buyer at Rizzoli Bookstore in Boston. Donna studied theater at university and often pretends she's a voice actor for recorded books. Take it away, Donna. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. This is Donna at Charles Bridge. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited to share our upcoming summer and fall picture books that I know you'll love. First up is Shh, The Baby's Asleep by Janae Brown Wood and illustrated by Alyssa Ambora. I think Janae Brown Wood is a rising star in children's lit. She's the author of Imani's Moon and Grandma's Tiny House, and she has a book on the storytelling math series releasing in the spring of 22 called Too Small Tyson. But we're here to talk about shh, the baby's asleep. And just a quick note, the pub date on this one has changed to July 6th. A growing family is trying to go about their day without waking the new baby, but everything is just too noisy. Big Brother especially wants to take great care. Alyssa and Bora's illustrations are super pretty and full of funny details and shows a very loving multi-generational family. But when the baby does wake up, it's Big Brother who knows exactly what to do to get baby back to sleep. This story with its timeless topic of wel welcoming a new baby is pitch perfect. And in instead of sibling rivalry, this is a wonderful story of sibling love and the love of sharing a favorite book. And the repetitive refrain of shh, the baby's asleep will make this a super fun read aloud. Next up is Mimic Makers by debut author Kristen Nordstrom. Kristen is a full-time teacher at a STEM academy teaching biomimicry. Biomimicry is a hot topic these days, and Kristen introduces us to 10 contemporary scientists, engineers, and designers from around the world who imitate plants and animals to create amazing new technology. For instance, engineer Aiji Nakatsu redesigned Japan's Shinkansen bullet train to make it faster and quieter by mimicking the streamlined beak of a kingfisher. And 
designer Kitai Pak mimicked the way the Namibian beetle collected morning dew on its back and tipped it forward to drink. He created the dew bank bottle shaped like a beetle that can take advantage of the morning mist to collect and save water. Paul Boston's illustrations are bright and pretty with plenty of white space and scientifically accurate. Back matter includes more information about the scientists highlighted, a glossary, bibliography, an author's note, and a note on how to become a mimic maker. This is a unique STEM title that brings cutting edge science into the classroom. We launched the Storytelling Math series last October and it's been fantastic. Storytelling Math is developed in collaboration with the STEM nonprofit Turk and the Heising Simons Foundation to present a broader range of math topics by authors and illustrators of color, starring characters of color, showing young readers that all kids are mathematical thinkers. Releasing this summer is Look Grandma Nia Lisi about a young boy getting ready to participate in his family's booth at the Cherokee National Holiday, but he needs a container to display his traditional marbles. Both author Art Colson and illustrator Madeline Goodnight are own voices creators and introduce young readers to a contemporary Native family and their traditions. Back Matter includes information about the ancient Cherokee game Diga Dayoshti, which is still played today. These are the marbles that Bo is making in the story. Bo's grandmother has given him the parameters of the space that he can take up in the booth, and Bo must find a container that will fit all of his marbles and also look good. It's a fun and funny exploration of space, volume, and capacity, as well as a celebration of contemporary Native family and tradition. Next up is Usha and the Big Digger by debut author Amitha Jagannath Knight and illustrated by Sandhya Prabhat. Sisters Usha and Artie see different things when they look at the stars. Full of energy and delightful curiosity, Usha and Artie are natural explorers. While admiring the constellations, Usha sees a big digger, Artie sees the big dipper, and cousin Gloria sees a big kite. Why do they all see different things? It's because they are all looking from a different perspective. This is a fun introduction to geometry and spatial relationships, as well as an introduction to the constellations and astronomy. These books are for ages three to six, and while full-on geometry may be too much for the intended audience, these engaging stories illustrate that young children are naturally applying mathematical thinking as they explore the world. I'm very excited about Archie Celebrates Diwali. I just love Archie and her excitement for her family's big Diwali party. Diwali is the Hindu festival of lights and it's Archie's favorite holiday. She's invited her friends over to celebrate and she hopes they enjoy it as much as she does. But she's also nervous because she's worried that Diwali won't stack up against their favorite holidays. But when a storm washes away her Rangoli and knocks out the power, she's worried her party will be a bust and nobody will like Diwali. But when Archie explains the story of the holiday, her friends are entranced. The electricity eventually comes back on and everyone has an amazing time. Everyone can relate to the embarrassing family members, silly traditions and personal favorite dishes that nobody else likes. But family and friends and celebration are universal too, regardless of what we celebrate and how. Archie Celebrates Diwali is Mitali Banerjee Ruth's debut book and Parvinder Singh's background in animation really shines in these illustrations. This book releases in September in plenty of time to get ready for Diwali, which starts on November 4th. Next is What's in Your Pocket? Collecting Nature's Treasures by Heather L. Montgomery and illustrated by Maribel Lechuga. When school media specialists referred to author Heather Montgomery as a female version of Bill Nye with the energy of Richard Simmons, and that is true. Heather encourages kids to follow their curiosity about the natural world using examples of great scientists like Charles Darwin, Jane Goodall, Mary Anning, and more, who collected everything from rocks and shells to bugs and leaves when they were kids. Back Matter includes more information about the scientists and their contributions, notes from both the author and the illustrator Maribel Lechuga, who makes a wonderful comparison to the observational skills of scientists to those of artists. Heather also includes her rules for collecting, respect nature, respect the people you live with, and respect yourself, all with complete explanations. 
Heather also includes suggested field guides to help in your hunting and collecting, as well as a bibliography. Releasing in September is our new series created in partnership with the folks at Chicken Soup for the Soul. In these sweet stories, we focus on social and emotional well-being. Every story has a simple, everyday situation with a simple lesson that is clearly explained and that kids will relate to. The launch list includes two board books from Chicken Soup for the Soul Babies and two picture books from the Chicken Soup for the Soul Kids. Today, we'll just cover the picture books. In Chicken Soup for the Soul Kids, a group of kids who live in the same apartment building form a squad of superheroes. In the Sunshine Squad, it's the youngest member who doesn't seem to have a super skill who gives the squad their purpose with caring behavior by helping their neighbors in their building. Natural born leader Oliver decides he and his friends need to start a superhero squad. Mia is the daring skateboarder, Sophie is the animal whisperer, and Lucas is the comedian. Then there's Tommy, Lucas's tag along little brother. He doesn't have a super skill, so they don't let him join superhero practice. But maybe Tommy's kindness and eagerness to help is his superpower. While his friends pretend to be superheroes, Tommy helps his neighbor with her groceries and saves the day when an orange bounces away and into trouble. In Sophie and the Tiny Dog Napping, Sophie inadvertently steals Mia's toy dog and is afraid to say anything. But she seeks advice from the Sunshine Squad and decides that telling the truth feels so much better and it makes everyone happier. I don't have interior spreads of Sophie and the Tiny Dog Napping today, but it's illustrated by Lorianne Tu, who illustrated the Sunshine Squad, so you can see how expressive, sweet, and bright her illustrations are. And next, everyone's favorite little reader, Lola, is back. There's no end to the everyday adventures book-loving Lola gets to have. Her first sleepover is a big deal. She gets to visit Cousin Hani. She's excited and prepares for her big night. There's lots of play, good food, a movie, dress up, and they build a fort, have French toast, all the things. And as we know, for Lola, there's always a book. At her sleepover, there's a different kind of bedtime story. Auntie tells the story of growing up with Lola's daddy with a book full of photos. A reassuring read for children preparing for their own sleepover adventure. We're excited to have another book from Jane Yolen and Wendell Minor on our list, and this one celebrates libraries and their mission of sharing knowledge and stories with the masses, told through the perspective of Benjamin Franklin's young son, Billy. His tutor excites him about books and stories, and when Franklin takes Billy to the Leather Apron Club, which is America's first successful lending library, Billy decides to do more with his education and life. Along with Wendell Miner's wonderful illustrations, this love letter to books, stories, and sharing them will appeal to book lovers old and young. The Leather Apron Club was founded in 1727 and it exists today as the Library Company of Philadelphia. This is a fascinating historical fiction starring little known historical figures. And throughout the book, Jane incorporates fun sayings from poor Richard's almanac. David Bedricki is at it again with another hilariously imaginative laugh out loud story. This time, what looks like a stuffed unicorn toy turns out to be an alien spy bent on total earth domination, except the earth earthlings win over his affection. Young readers and older readers will love Invasion of the Unicorns. Dave found inspiration from a toy unicorn in one of those claw machine games. He spent like 20 bucks to win the toy, which he says was very special. The story began unwinding in his mind, and as he struggled to catch the stuffed mythical creature that he could have probably purchased for $10, the toy is not a toy at all. Visiting from a planet of plush unicorns, our hero is tasked with reporting back on human behavior and life on Earth. But as the love of his earthling girl and her family envelops him, and as he experiences adventures with friends and family, Unicorn decides invasion might not be the best thing. Dave's signature hilarious illustrations take a, un a unique turn. Half the book is in black and white with pops of sparkly color, but soon the story unfolds in full magical unicorn color. And look for this one in October. Next up, Anne Sidley O'Brien is the author illustrator of I'm New Here and Someone New, and is the founder of I'm Your Neighbor, an organization that promotes children's literature featuring new arrival cultures and co-founder of the Bates College Diverse Bookbinder Project. In Circle Round, a group of children get together in a park. 
counting from one to 10, a growing circle of children see new faces outside the group and invite them over. Children of different abilities, ages, genders, and races demonstrate how easy it can be to expand your group, extend yourself, and welcome new friends. This sweet story is perfect when looking for books on immigration and inclusion, and it's a lovely story to share with emergent readers. And Anna Cha Hannah Cha's art is irresistible. That's it for me. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions, or if you would like to receive review copies. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Donna. Next, we will hear from Lauren Wengrovitz and Amanda Acevedo. Lauren is the marketing associate for Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers. After writing for an entertainment site and working as a bookseller, she now loves being a part of HMH's marketing team and helping readers find their books. Amanda is the school and library marketing manager for Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers. After moving to Boston in 2011 to obtain her master's degree in publishing from Emerson College, she was hired at HMH and has been talking about their wonderful books ever since. The floor is yours, Lauren and Amanda. Hi there, thanks so much for being here with us today. So first off, I just wanted to start with a couple books, you can hit the next slide. Uh, that came out in January and February, just in case you missed them. So the whole, whole story follows Zia as she imagines all the strange and wonderful things that might happen if the hole in her pocket became big enough to fall through. Marsha is magnetic, charts Marsha's efforts to make friends through the scientific method and with magnets. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy is the story of a father and son connecting, even if a parrot gets in the way for a little while. This is perfect for Father's Day coming up. Uh, Mr. Complain Takes the Train is a silly interactive story of a complainer who learns to find joy in the journey. And Hip Hip Beret follows the rhyming hilarious journey of Bella as she chases her beret through the city streets. So then on to our spring books. My first one is Once Upon a Dragon's Fire by Beatrice Blue. How did dragons get their fire? It all began once upon a magical kingdom where a fearsome dragon stalked the land. The dragon was mean and scary and evil, or so the story said. But one, bra one day, two brave children set out to stop him for good. When they finally meet the monster, he isn't quite what they expected. Find out how two kids' determination to save their village leads to a friendship that will warm the hearts of dragon lovers everywhere in this gorgeously illustrated celebration of the magic of kindness. Secrets of the Sea by Evan Griffith, illustrated by Joni Stone. How did a 19th century dressmaker revolutionize science? Jean Power was creative. She wanted to learn about ocean creatures, so she built glass tanks and changed the way we study underwater life forever. Jean Power was groundbreaking. She solved mysteries of sea animals and published her findings at a time when few of women's contributions to scientists, science were acknowledged. She was also persistent. When records of her research were lost, she set out to repeat her studies. And when men tried to take credit for her achievements, she stood firm and insisted on the recognition due to her. Jeannie Power was inspiring and the legacy of this pioneering marine scientist lives on in every aquarium. I'm a hair so there by Julie Rowan Zock. When a chipmunk mistakes hair for a rabbit, hair puts him in his place. But actually the chipmunk is a squirrel or so he says. Ever wondered about the difference between a turtle and a tortoise or a sheep and a goat? So have rabbit and chipmunk, uh, I mean, hare and squirrel. This hilarious look at dynamic duos in the animal kingdom pokes fun at the lookalike animals we all love while delivering a gentle lesson on appreciating differences and standing up for what you know to be true about yourself. Duck, duck, moose by Mary Sullivan. Duck, Duck, and Moose are pay playing a quiet game of cards when their friend comes running up to ask, where is Goose? Duck, Duck, and Moose search high and low all day, but Goose is nowhere to be found. Watch as the friends search for Goose through the whole barnyard in this laugh aloud rhyming picture book from Geisel Honor winner, Mary Sullivan, perfect for reading out loud and for fans of I Am a Donkey and the Bad Seed. 
Clarinet and Trumpet by Melanie Ellsworth, illustrated by John Herzog. Clarinet and Trumpet are friends from the very first note, but their friendship falls flat when a new woodwind, oboe, sets the tone in the music room. Trumpet tries everything to get Clarinet's attention again, but Clarinet doesn't change her tune. The story crescendos until the woodwinds face off against the brass section in an ear-splitting musical duel. How will clarinet and trumpet bring the band back together again and save their melodious friendship? With pun-filled text and emotive illustrations, clarinet and trumpet honors the important role music plays in creating community. And with a built-in noisemaker, just shake the book and you can join the band too. Your Mama by Noniqua Ramos, illustrated by Jacqueline Alcantara. A sweet twist on the age-old Yo Mama joke celebrating fierce moms everywhere with playful lyricism and gorgeous illustrations. Yo mama's so sweet, she could be a bakery. She dresses so fine, she could have a clothing line. And even when you mess up, she's so forgiving, she'll let you keep on living. Heartwarming and richly imagined, your mama twists an old joke into a point of pride that honors the love, hard work, and dedication of moms everywhere. Don't say poop by Jimmy Matajek Morris, illustrated by Fred Blunt. Everybody poops meets the book with no pictures in this irresistibly naughty read aloud. When you get the urge to say, you know what, don't. Don't say poop. Why say a gross word like poop when you could say humdrum bum crumbs, float and sinker, major stinker, sometimes mushy from your tushy or smelly belly funky jelly. See how much nicer that is? This silly book of tongue twisters will have kids doubled over as they learn some alternatives to their favorite potty words. Perfect for reading aloud and for reading again and again, if you're brave. <laughs> Tag Team and Training Day by Raul III. El Toro from the Vamos books is off on his own adventures. In Training Day, El Toro's first task is getting out of bed even though he's feeling uninspired. But his coach, Kooky Dookie, knows that practice is worth it. In tag team, the wrestling stadium is a mess. With the collaborative spirit they have in the ring, El Toro and La Oink Oink tackled the cleaning up together. Sports fans, comic book fans, and everyone else will fall in love with these early readers with their unique illustrations and easy Spanish and English vocabulary words. Oh Look, a Cake by J.C. McKee. When Sloth and Lemur come across a giant mouth-watering cake, they can't believe their luck. Sloth wonders if they should tell the others, but Lemur is pretty sure they shouldn't. As Sloth lists their friends one by one, Lemur is ready with excuse after excuse as to why it's better to keep, keep the cake to themselves. In the end, that's what they do. But then the true owner of the cake comes along. With impeccable comedic timing, ample visual humor, and a subversively hilarious ending. This highly entertaining story, complete with a memorable reminder about the importance of sharing, will have readers young and old giggling at every page turn. Tow Truck Joe Makes a Splash by June Sobel, illustrated by Patrick Corrigan. Brimming with catchy rhymes, bright colors, and summer fun, this sequel to Tow Truck Joe will delight fans of the originals and new readers alike. It's a hot summer day in Motor City and Joe the Toe and Patch the Pup are very busy. When a backup at the Splash and Shine car wash causes a delay, Patch and Joe need help from their friends to save the day. There's no job too big for their Motor City friends when they work together. Dear Tree Frog by Joyce Sidman, illustrated by Diana Sudika. When a shy girl moves to a strange new home, she discovers a tree frog perched in a secret spot nearby and learns that sometimes all it takes to connect with the people in the world around us is a little patience, a curious mind, and a willingness to see the world through a different perspective than your own. With beautiful illustrations by Diana Sudika and magical perceptive poems from Newbery Honor winning author Joyce Sidman, the lives of one tree frog and the girl who discovers it converge, bringing solace, courage, and joy in finding a kindred spirit. This title has three starred reviews with book lists saying it encourages little ones to get outside, slow down, and look closely at what's around them. Shark Book by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. 
Caldecott honor winning team Steve Jenkins and Robin Page explore the astonishing lives of sharks in this brilliantly illustrated picture book. Sharp teeth, super senses, and those infamous fins. What's not to love about sharks? Learn what makes a shark a shark, what sharks like to eat, and how these predators of the deep have evolved. Ever wonder which shark is the smallest or the fastest, even the most deadly? You'll find your answers in the shark book with countless others. How to Wear a Sari by Darshana Kiani, illustrated by Joanne Lou Verhoff. When a little girl tires of being treated like she's too little, she sets out to prove to her family that she can do anything she puts her mind to, including putting on a colorful, twinkly, silky sari. Sure, they're long and unwieldy, that only means her family will be even more impressed when she puts it on all by herself. Sparkling with voice and charm, this picture book features a kid out to prove she's not as small as everyone thinks and a universal story for any kid who is eager to grow up. Time for School, Little Blue Truck by Alice Shirtle, illustrated by Jill McElmurray. Little Blue Truck and his good friend Toad are excited to meet a bright yellow school bus on the road. Blue wishes he could be a school bus too. What a fun job, but much too big for a little pickup like Blue. Or is it? When somebody misses the bus, it's up to Blue to get his friends to school on time. Best Day Ever by Marilyn Singer, illustrated by Leah Nixon. This playful puppy thinks she's having the best day ever. She's so happy to be out with her friend, she doesn't even realize she's being a little naughty. But then he scolds her and suddenly, worst day ever. Will puppy be able to make amends and turn their day back around? Join an exuberant boundary pushing pup and her exasperated boy in this reassuring story about unconditional love and the challenges of trying to always be on your best behavior. Little Bat in Night School by Brian Lees. Little Bat can't wait for his first night of school, but when he finally arrives, his world turns upside down when some of the other kids aren't so nice. But a new friend turns his night back right side up as they explore and learn together. With the help of Little Bat, readers will see that spreading your wings is easy when you listen, act with kindness, and take a chance on new friends. With his signature gorgeous artwork, New York Times bestseller and Caldecott honor winner, Brian Lees brings his expressive bats back for the youngest readers. Chill Chomp Chill. From losing a toy to making a huge mistake on the kickball field, Chomp is a lovable T-Rex going through tough and relatable preschool experiences. When Chomp is about to lose his temper and act out, he uses mindfulness as a tool to better understand his emotions. This picture book helps kids identify, understand, and cope with their feelings. With bright, humorous, and playful illustrations and a memorable companion song, children will all want to chill with Chomp as they learn skills to manage their emotions and sticky situations through his example. Henry at Home. As long as there's been a Henry and Eliza, they've done everything together. Haircuts, birthday parties, tree climbing, even flu shots. But all that changes when Liza starts school for the first time, heading to kindergarten and leaving her little brother behind. Henry is incredulous. How can Liza do this to him? This gorgeously illustrated picture book explores a sweet sibling relationship and carries an important and reassuring message about family and growing up. How to make a friend. Ever wish friendship came with an instruction manual? A resourceful youngster follows step-by-step -step directions for constructing a robot to be her friend. The instructions make it sound so simple, but they also also caution that sometimes a friendship doesn't turn out as hoped for as the girl discovers when her new friend unexpectedly unleashes an evil robot army on the city. Now she has to stop the robot and seriously reevaluate their friendship. In the end, the resilient heroine of this comical and clever tale not only saves the city, she finds a real and lasting friend where least expected. Mr. Walker works hard letting people know when it's safe to cross the street. But after a while, watching the world goes by without him makes him feel small and unimportant. So he decides to jump down from his box and experience for himself all the wonderful things he's seen from his post. With each new adventure, he feels bigger and more important. But after enjoying all the wonderful things the city has to offer, something happens, something big. And Mr. Walker wonders if it might be time to go home where he's needed most. Thank you so much for listening and learning about our upcoming picture book titles. 
Uh, feel free to email us with questions and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thank you so much, Lauren and Amanda. Our next panelist will be Ashley Marie Morales. Ashley is the Director of Sales and Marketing at Familius Publishing, working to help families be happy. Ashley believes that happy home lives can lead to a happier world and hopes that the books she writes, helps create, and sells will bring families to a happier place in their lives. She has authored several children's books with Familius and hopes to continue creating more. Her collaborative sales efforts have helped Familius become one of the fastest growing independent publishers for four years in a row. Take it away, Ashley. Hey, thank you. Um, so I'm going to introduce our fall 2021 future books to you, starting with The Proudest Color. Um, so The Proudest Color is a story about Zyra as she goes to school for the first time and notices that she is a little bit different than all of her classmates, um, most notably in her skin tone. Um, as she goes throughout her day, um, she likes to describe her emotions using colors. So when she's happy, she's pink. When she's sad, she's blue. And she feels very proud about her brown, um, as her mother has taught her to be. Um, this book is written by a pediatric therapist and family counselor, Sheila Mugira and Jeffrey Kashun. And they work with children to help them deal with race issues and anxiety about going to school. Um, they use this story to also help parents teach their children positive ways to react to negative and harmful messages that they may experience in school. So as Zyra um, experiences this negative uh, thing in her school day, her mom teaches her that it, she should be proud of who she is and gives her examples of why. Um, so we'll see in the next slides. Um, she's naming all of her feelings with colors. Um, sorry, we can move to the next slide. So here's her mother. Um, teaching her about how, or to be proud of her skin color. And then we can move to the next slide. So when she does experience this negative um, person at school, her mom asks her to remember other people who look like her, who have done great things and teaches her some historical figures who have done so as well. And um, so she has her old school principal, she has her doctor, um, Malala, and on the next slide, you'll see a couple other examples. Um, the back matter of this book does include information for both parents and teachers about how to help students dealing with negative messaging regarding race. Um, the illustrator, Monica Mackay, has also drawn from her own personal experience as a Black child um, to really bring this book and experience from Zara to life. And next, we have Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Um, so this is an illustrated Robert Frost poem, um, the first time it's coming to life using illustrations. Um, earlier this, or actually last year, we released another book from Robert Frost, um, which we had illustrated by Vivian Meinegger as well. Um, you can click next. So The Road Not Taken. Um, these books are going to be the same trim size, same price point, so they do pair together beautifully and they tell the story of the poem in a way that aligns with the familiar message and um, tying it back to family. So you'll see on the next slide um, that the man goes into the woods, um, just as the poem says, all the words are the exact words from the Robert Frost poem. And next you'll see um, he starts to imagine the different um, phases of his life and memories from his past, including his parents and his family. Um, so you can click on the next slide. Um, so you'll see memories throughout, um, as well as these really fun woodland creatures that you would see during a snowy time in the woods, um, and just beautiful illustrations from Vivian throughout.
Great. And next we have The Star Jumped Over the Moon by John Schlimm. Um, John has been participating in a lot of poetry events throughout the pandemic, including a family poem for the world and the Gen Z time capsule. Um, this is in another illustrated poem, um, this time an original one from the author, in which this tiny star notices that they are stuck in a tree and they're not sure how they got there. Um, you'll see beautiful illustrations from, um, from our illustrator here, where the star goes through all of these different seasons, enjoying the tree, enjoying the blossoms, um, until one day the star realizes that the tree is not where he is supposed to be um, and decides to make a jump for it. Um, the first try doesn't quite make it, but he tries again and eventually does make it into the sky with all of the rest of the stars as he's supposed to be. Um, so just a beautiful poem about the seasons and never giving up and to really jump for the moon, quite literally. <laughs> um, yeah, so John Slim will be available for events. He'll be available for tons of different writing events as well. Um, just a first time author, very eager to promote this book. Um, and next we have Never Wolf. <laughs> so this is a story about Never Wolf, the dog that doesn't bark by Gabe Jensen. So you'll see throughout the book, even when a ball jumps past him, even when there's cars going by, all the things where a dog would normally bark, Never Wolf does not bark. And that is until he catches the attention of the neighborhood thief, Stinky Sue, um, who notices that a dog that doesn't bark is the perfect house for a robbery. Um, so she decides to sneak into the house and there comes a point in the story where Never Wolf has to decide if he's going to continue never whooping or if it's his time to bark. Um, and of course he doesn't whoop. Instead we find out that Never Wolf can actually talk and <laughs> the story ends with him letting his people know that he does talk, he just chooses not to. And this hilarious story will be perfect for read alouds, great reveal at the end for kids, um, and just a really fun, goofy dog story. And next we have When You Gave Me You. This is a new book by Clay Rice, um, who is a world-renowned silhouette artist. Um, you'll see his art throughout the book, um, just color washed in different images. This book is all about the things that makes a child so special um, and it is a birthday book um, all about the day that the child became the parent's child, um, being the greatest gift of all. So all of the things that he does, all of the things that he is, um, the greatest gift of all is the child himself. So really beautiful imagery, um, really beautiful poetry for parents to give children. Um, and just a positive affirmation for children growing up and coming of age. So next we have How the Birds Became Friends. Um, this book is a retold folk tale from um, storyteller Noah Baum, who is world renowned for her storytelling. Um, she travels all over the world telling this story to children. Um, and this is the first time it's being adapted into a book. The illustrator, Zev, um, he is also an international artist, part of the Artists for Nature Foundation, and he is an ecologist. Um, so you'll see in the front and back matter of this book information of the birds portrayed throughout. Um, but it is a story about how the birds went from squawking at each other and yelling at each other to eventually becoming friends. And they were, they learned from example of the crow and the quail who one day decide that they can actually share a tree, that it's okay if they both sit in the same tree um, and they spend a day playing, enjoying themselves, and then once again share the tree. When the other birds notice what is happening, they decide that they can also play with each other 
and they don't have to be cruel towards each other um, just because they're different birds. And so a great story about friendship told from an internationally known storyteller. And again, there is back matter about all of the birds um, as well as information about feathers if you do find them. Next, we have Zhang Hong and the Incredible Earthquake Detector. This book is based on a true story, the true story of Zhang Hong, who created the first seismograph, which detects earthquakes. Um, and it's retold by Randall McGee, who is a world-renowned puppeteer. Um, all of the illustrations are actually Chinese paper puppets, um, which Randall has created himself. Um, you see, so Zhang Hong was tasked with creating the first seismograph after a series of earthquakes had affected China. Um, the emperor requested him to create something that would warn them when earthquakes would happen. Um, and so through a dream, he decided that he could figure out where the earthquakes were coming from the shakes in the ground. Um, the images in this book show the actual um, machine that he created out of gold, um, this really beautiful seismograph that told them which direction the earthquakes were coming from. Um, and both of our end sheets and back matter explain the folk tale of the earthquake, which is depicted here, um, this idea that dragons were rumbling under the ground um, inspired him to look for the shakes in the ground through his se seismograph. Um, it's a really great uh, histor Chinese history story, folk tale, and a little bit of science for children who are interested in any of those topics. And next we have The Great and the Grand. This is a beautiful story about the juxtaposition between a grandpa or a great grandfather and a grandchild. Um, so you see two sides of the story throughout the book. Uh, one side where a baby is getting ready for their first journey outside of the house. The other side where a grandfather is getting ready for his first visit with his grandchild. Um, and ultimately, they do come together to be the great and the grand, um, just beautiful multi-generational story um, with illustrations from Elizabeth Robbins, who is a world-renowned oil painter. Um, so beautiful still life and real life story. Yeah, and all of these books are available for review. Um, we do have PDFs available. You can contact Kate Farrell at katefarrell at familias.com or hello at familias.com. Um, we do also have reading guides for all of the titles presented today. Thank you so much, Ashley. Next up, we have Heather Lennon. Heather is the sales director at North South Books USA, a picture book publisher that creates beautiful books from international authors and illustrators. From Marcus Pfister's classic Rainbow Fish to the new delightful Mouse Adventures from Torben Kuhlman, Heather enjoys working with North South's fun and eclectic list. Thank you for joining us today, Heather. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you and talk about some of our summer and fall 2021 titles with you. Um, thanks for joining us. We can move on to the next slide, please. Um, librarians, booksellers, children, and parents have all embraced Torben Kuhlman's Mouse Adventure series since it began with Lindbergh in 2014. So we're really excited for you to join us on the next adventure. Slide, please. Einstein, The Fantastic Journey of a Mouse Through Space and Time will be on sale September 7th. You can go on to the next slide, please. There's a lot to dig into this with this series. Great reviews, um, an ALA Bachelor Honor Award for Edison, immersive content, brilliant illustrations, um, a great STEM, STEAM tie-in, and an appealing young creator. Um, if you want to 
go on to the next slide. That would be great. We can look at some of the interiors. Um, when an inventive mouse misses the biggest cheese festival the world has ever seen, he's determined to turn back the clock. With the help of a mouse clock maker, a lot of inventiveness, and the notes of a certain famous Swiss physicist, can he succeed in traveling back in time? We have some gorgeous interiors here and Torben's incredible artwork is so detailed and exciting. Even though the book is fiction, it still includes extensive information on Einstein in the back matter. We can go on to the next slide, please. And the next. We have an adventurous marketing campaign that will reach every reader. Uh, we have a fantastic book trailer that's available on the dedicated website, www.themouseadventures.com, as well as on our North South Books YouTube channel. Um, I really highly recommend watching the book trailer. It's almost like a mini movie. It's three and a half minutes long and it's animated by, by Torben Kuhlman himself. It's really incredible. Um, we'll also be doing a ton of print and digital advertising. So I'm sure people will be coming into the library asking for this book. Um, and Torben's going to join us for some virtual events, including the upcoming ALA annual where he'll be um, um, in discussion about the process of creating Einstein. Uh, we have e-galleys available. Um, all of our titles are actually available on Edelweiss and NetGalley, or you can email me. My contact information is at the end of the presentation. But um, we're really excited about Einstein. This is probably the biggest book that we've published in a decade. Um, and the response to all of Torben's books has just been fantastic. So um, it's just a treat to have a new one from him. We can. Go on to the next title, please. The Speckled Feather from Johanna Rees. Um, this is an absolutely beautiful debut from Johanna, who's a German illustrator. If we wanna go on to the next slide and look at the interior. Um, it is the story of three birds who live on the back of an elephant who are torn apart by a beautiful feather um, that they each covet. Um, so it's sort of a simple fable, but her illustrations, if you go on to the next slide as well, are just gorgeous. So uh, they really, I think, turn this into a very special book. Next slide, please. Norman's first day at Dino Daycare. Um, Sean Julian is one of our funniest authors. Um, he's British and this book will be out in time for back to school. Um, we can go on to the interior, please. Um, Norman is a shy little dinosaur. It's his first day at school. Of course, he makes friends. He learns to get over his shyness. Interior, please. Next slide, please. The Field from Baptiste Paul and Jacqueline Arcantera. Um, we published this book in hardcover several years ago. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful and it won tons of best book of the year citations. Um, was also a Sonia Lynn Sadler award winner. Um, Jacqueline Alcantara you saw before um, with the book, Your Mama. She is just a wonderful illustrator and Baptiste writes these incredible texts that alternate between English and Creole. So um, it's a really fun experience. If you go on to the next slide, we can look at some of the illustrations. So these books will be out in paperback in August. Um, but just like tremendously fun. Soccer is so popular. Um, her, the, the vibrancy and movement and the illustrations is just really special. We're also going to do a new book with Baptiste um, and Jackie called Climb On that will be out in spring 22. Christmas is coming, traditions from around the world um, from Monica Utnick Strugala and Ewa Pulitska Koziello. Um, this is a book that we imported from Poland. It's absolutely beautiful. If you wanna move on to the next slide. Um, it shows uh, traditions from all around the world. It's 136 pages. Um, illustrations are absolutely stunning. Uh, why do we celebrate Christmas on December 25th? Who invented the first glass ornament? Why do people build nativity scenes? All of these questions will be answered. And it's also a really wonderful diverse collection. It goes everywhere from Ethiopia to Sweden. If you wanna show some of the other interiors, um, Mexico, Greece, um, it talks about foods and traditions. And it's just really a lot of fun. Next slide, please. Next up is the mountain. Argumentative animals with an 
come to an understanding in this funny story about perspective. If you wanna show the interior, it would be great. Um, Rebecca Guger and Simon Rosslisberger are actually a married duo. Their first book, Ida and the Whale, was really well received here in the United States. They're German. Um, it was an Indianex pick, but these illustrations are just brilliant. And it's sort of a play on perspective, um, not only your personal point of view, but also artistic perspective. Um, so it's just brilliant, brilliant illustrations and a really sharp text combined to just create a beautiful book. Next slide, please. My Mother's Delightful Deaths. I adore this book. Um, this is the sort of book that North South does really, really well. It's an unusual book. It's a funny book. It's Carla Haselbauer's debut picture book. Um, and you can read it on a lot of different levels um, if you wanna go on to one of the interiors. It's a funny story about a mom who's a real drama queen. She's an opera singer and she dies on stage. It's also a book about a family who supports their working mom. You can see the next slide. Um, and it's a book about big emotions. So this is a really unique debut that's both fun and thoughtful. And I think her art style is really expressive. Very expressive right there. Next slide, please. Franz Ferdinand discovers a love of the dance with the help of some flamingo friends. Beautiful illustrations combined with best-selling author Marcus Pfister. You know him from The Rainbow Fish. Um, he is just a master of child-friendly storytelling. It shows some of the interiors, great. Um, it's always a treat to have something new from Marcus. Lovely, bright illustrations and a kind-hearted story about Franz Ferdinand who longs to join the ballet. Next slide, please. Stories for Christmas is from Bernadette Watts and it showcases eight classic tales from Bernadette. Um, if you know Bernadette. She is um, an English illustrator who has been illustrating for North South for over 40 years. Um, you can show some of the interiors would be great. Um, this collection includes Varenka, which has been long out of print. Um, also the little snowflake, the little drummer boy, shoemaker Martin, the star child, the snow queen, the little donkey, and the Christmas story. Boris the Cat, a big, beautiful collection of Erwin Moser's Boris stories told in comic book style. You can go on to the next slide, please. Boris is funny. The stories are simple and warm hearted. Boris passed away on 2017. He was one of Austria's most popular children's book authors. And as far as I know, this is the first time the Boris books have been published here in the United States. I'm sorry, I meant to say Erwin Moser passed away in 2017. But you can see these books. Um, it's a collection, they're comic book style, they're really fun short stories to read out loud. Um, so uh, kids really like them, they're kind of a great bedtime story, little snippets, um, and very funny. On to the next slide. The bad mood. Mr. Badger's bad mood affects everyone around him. Illustrator Amelie Jaskowski's wonderfully humorous illustrations are irresistible. You can look at the interiors. Badger wakes up one morning feeling very grumpy and he spreads his bad mood far and wide, greeting all of his friends with angry, rude remarks that put them in bad moods too. A comical cautionary tale for anyone who has ever gotten up on the wrong side of the bed. Um, Amelie Joukowsky also illustrated a book called Dr. Mouse that came out during the pandemic and did very well for us. So um, she has a real, a real fun touch, I think. Next is... A Christmas Carol, um, illustrated by Lisbeth Werger. Uh, this is the beloved Christmas story. Um, with You can go onto the interiors with illustrations from Lisbeth. Lisbeth is a Hans Christian Andersen award-winning illustrator, which is the highest honor that you can give in illustration. And she's known for sort of always coming at things from a different angle. So she sort of always gives you the illustrations that um, in the story that you might not have expected. So just absolutely stunning. And then we're going to wrap it up with the star tree from Gisela Cole. Um, this is just a, a lovely book that's been on our backlist and we are reissuing it. Um, I think it's the sort of book, it's a really simple story about an old man who decorates a tree in his town square with stars and the entire town comes out and joins him. Um, and it's just, it's sort of an absolutely beautiful reason for the season kind of book, so. Thank you for joining me and um, definitely 
reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to get in touch with you and share advanced reading copies or anything like that. Join us on social media. So thanks very much. Thank you, Heather. Our final panelist today will be Megan Jones. Megan is the marketing director for the independent publishing house, Greystone Books, and its imprint, Greystone Kids. Welcome, Megan. Hi, thank you so much for having me, everyone. I know we're like at the end of the hour, so I'm gonna to try to be real quick. Um, Greystone Kids is an imprint of Greystone Books, which is an independent publisher of non-fiction trade books about the environment, uh, climate action, health, and science. And we've been publishing for over 25 years. Um, Greystone Kids is our imprint, launched in 2019, and we've gone on to publish critically acclaimed and award-winning picture books and middle grade nonfiction for a variety of age ranges. I know this is a picture book webinar, but I have snuck in a few really great middle grade nonfiction books. I hope that's okay. Um, we are distributed by PGW Ingram. All our books are available as eBooks. Um, teacher's guides for the titles I'm presenting today are available for free download on our website. Um, for those of you who use Idlevice, I've created a catalog so you can follow along or visit it after the presentation. I know you'll get these slides and you're always welcome to reach out to me by email, questions and comments, love to hear from you. Um, I want to start by highlighting two Greystone Kids authors who I would love you to know about if you don't already. Um, the first is Julie Flett, an award-winning Cree Métis children's writer and illustrator based in Vancouver, Canada. Julie is the author and illustrator of Birdsong, which published when we launched in 2019 and went on to win the TD Award, which is Canada's largest children's literature award with a prize of $50,000, which is amazing. Birdsong was also a best book of the year with many outlets, received an American Indian Youth Literature Honor title, and was a Boston Globe Hornbook Honor book. Um, it tells the story of a friendship between a little girl, Katharina, and the elderly woman, Agnes, who lives next door to her and her mother. Throughout the book, Katharina and Agnes teach and learn from each other. Katharina tells Agnes about the Cree seasons, shares words from her Cree language, and Agnes invites the girl to help with her art practice and her garden. Julie's next book, We All Play, published just last month and already has several starred reviews. In this book, Julie takes on a playful and alliterative tone, exploring the similar ways that animals and children play, while continuing to share Cree teachings and language. Throughout the book, animals swim and squirt and nudge and nuzzle, so cute, and children similarly play and shout a refrain in English and in Cree. The back matter to this book includes an English to Cree glossary, which is very cool. And on our website, you'll find an interactive audio guide to pronouncing the animal names from the book in Cree. So you can click on them and hear the, the name in Cree. The Cree Literacy Network helped us create these tools and you can learn more about them at creeliteracy.org. The next Greystone author I'd like to highlight is Peter Volaven, a German forester whom you may know as the international best-selling author of The Hidden Life of Trees. We're super lucky that Peter would like to publish his kids' books with us, um, Can You Hear the Trees Talking, a middle grade nonfiction book published in 2019 and went on to win an American Association for the Advancement of Science book award and several starred reviews. It takes kids on a journey of discovery into the forest, explaining how trees communicate, feel, and care for each other. Interactive elements like DIY activities make this a great learning tool that really came in handy during the pandemic when lots of kids were learning outside. Peter's next book, which published again just last month, uses the exact same format, very interactive, to share the fascinating science of the animal kingdom with kids. He explores the lives of animals who may be local to us, and he talks about animals around the world, answering questions like, why do birds fly south and do elephants have dreams? I'll now turn with my remaining few minutes to a few of our upcoming fall titles. Little Narwhal Not Alone is inspired by the true story of a young narwhal who swam all the way from the Arctic to the St. Lawrence River, where he was adopted by a pod of beluga whales and where he remains today. This picture book by Tiffany Stone, illustrated by Ashlyn Anstey, imagines what the little narwhal could have gone through on this exciting journey. Um, and back matter in the book includes a note from a marine biologist about the real little narwhal, so very cool. I Hear You Forest is written by Callie George, who you may know from her much beloved Heartwood Hotel book series. Callie also works with us as an editor and has actually acquired lots of our 
most acclaimed picture books. So we're really excited to be publishing one from her. This calm and super gentle book is beautifully illustrated by Carmen Mock, whose book Grandmother's Visit was selected as a picture book honor title of the Asian Pacific American Award. You may have know Carmen as well. This book is inspired by Callie's trips into the forest with her own son, where she would say, I hear you every time he pointed out a new sound that he heard in the forest. How Beautiful by Antonella Capetti and illustrated by Melissa Castrillon follows the story of a confused caterpillar who embarks on a quest to ask each creature in the forest what the word beautiful means. Naturally, in the forest, there are many different definitions for the word beautiful. I won't ruin the surprise, but I will say that at the end of the book, all of the animals can agree on at least one definition. My Dog Banana has been called a jewel of absurdity by our editors, and I couldn't agree more. In this silly but very smart book, a child takes their banana for a walk. Neighbors stop and point, asking questions. But all the while, the child insists that this is a dog, not a banana. I love the way that Julia has drawn the characters. I especially love their outfits. And I love how Roxanne's text perfectly captures the self-assuredness and confidence of the child. It Takes Guts by Dr. Jennifer Gardy is a middle grade book, um, heavily illustrated. It tells the story of our digestive system and spares none of the gory details. From your mouth to your rear end, this middle grade book covers everything while explaining this latest science about the gut, including our microbiome. Dr. Gardy has worked as a kid science communicator as well as a health data scientist. She's now with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's malaria team. I think that Bell's illustrations for this book are amazingly icky. I love this one of the fecal factory. Lots of really amazing art in this book and information. Um, New Year by Mei Zisan and Qin Leng publishes in November. Uh, this touching and emotive picture book is told on the eve of Lunar New Year from the perspective of a Chinese father whose daughter is absent. Um, from the family celebrations, she has grown up, she's moved out, and she now lives in Paris pursuing her dreams. The father is both proud of his daughter's independence and he mourns her absence during such an important time for the family. I think that New Year is such a perfect holiday book. It really captures the bittersweet feelings of family get-togethers and the pangs and pains of children growing up and starting their own holiday traditions. And beautiful, beautiful art as well. I love this art. Finally, we have Off the Beaten Track, More Great Art. Um, it's a picture book. It really reminds me of a very simple graphic novel as well. It follows the very adventurous story of a young boy and his mentor who embark on a thrilling journey through ice and snow. Tom's illustrations remind me of the Wes Anderson film, The Grand Budapest Hotel, if you've seen that, but more graphic and angular. Um, the illustrations were actually finished before the text in this book, which was added later. Um, yeah, so more great illustrations. So that's actually it from me. Thank you everyone for listening and a reminder that you can find teacher's guides for our book on our website. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or comments about our books. I'd love to hear from you. My email is right here. And um, thank you very much for listening today. Thank you so much, Megan, and a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Did you know there's still time to register for ALA Annual? Taking place between June 23rd and 29th, this year's conference will feature amazing speakers like former President Barack Obama, educational programming, and an opportunity to connect with colleagues and librarians everywhere. Visit 2021.alaannual.org for more details. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get Booklist for only $75.
Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. One more thank you to our sponsors, Charles Bridge Publishing, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers, Familius, North South Books, and Greystone Kids. This concludes today's webinar.